building the internet presence. So let me pop up to the uh, PowerPoint and let's get started. So uh, using websites, mobile sites, and apps. Uh, basically about the idea goes back to what we discussed at the beginning of the semester. Have your business formulated in, in your mind using these key principles, vision, mission, target audience, and market space analysis of your strategy, how you're going to market, and your development timeline and early, early budget. So basically, where's the money? How are you going to make money? What is your business model? Are you going to be a portal, an e-tailer, content? It, you know, you have to kind of look at all of these things. You have to look at what parts of a hybrid will you be? Um, at Real Savvy Media, we were a content provider, but we were also uh, an ad uh, aggregator. Uh, we were a community platform, and we were a video serving uh, company. Um, you know, at Bye Bye Baby, we were purely an e-commerce retailer, but we were also uh, a transaction and a uh, not just uh, off the website, but off of uh, gift registry for babies. So it was a hybrid models is typically the way you're going to go. And then think about your revenue model. I touched on a few of these. Uh, advertising is one, subscription, transaction fees, product fees, sales, which is product fees, and affiliate revenue through partnerships. Um, your audience, you have to be looking at classic marketing fundamentals, demographics, lifestyle behavior, uh, what are their purchasing habits of your, of your customers. So really dig into um, you know, what their digital usage patterns. Are they Facebook? Are they YouTube people on the social side? Are they tablet, laptop, mobile? Are they all of the above? Um, and then think about your, the creation patterns of your audience. How are they engaging with the internet? Are they conversing? In blogs, or are they more a Facebook or Twitter type? And then a classic, uh, very helpful that I've used with a lot of companies and startups from enterprise technology software companies I've worked for through um, through uh, fashion and mobile and sports oriented startups. What are your buyer personas? Um, in in any target audience, you're going to have multiple types of buyers. You might have males ages 18 to 50, and within that, you'll have multiple uh, 18 to 25, 25 to 34, 34 to 50. Uh, that's just age demographics, but then there might be usage, digital usage uh, uh, differentiations even within those groups. Consumption, uh, there could be urban versus rural. Uh, so you take, let's say, MLB.com, Major League Baseball, uh, you know, and you break that down in terms of what is their audience, how do they use the internet, how do they, uh, how do they create content, and how do they purchase jerseys, hats, hot dogs, beers, game tickets, videos, all of that. Okay, so imagine your, your presence some more and characterize your market space once you get a handle on these demographics. Then begin to blow it out a little bit further in terms of the size, uh, how big is your market, forecasting, uh, you know, what it is, looking at the trends for the past few years, looking at competitors, uh, looking at the suppliers that help you provide the goods or the content that you'll be providing. But what other pieces of the structure are you looking at? Um, you need to look at what substitute products might be out there, either from your competitors or products that you can substitute to fill a consumer need so you get those transactions. How is the market growing? How is it changing over time? What is the impact of digital consumption on hard goods? What is the impact of digital usage or conversation uh, in terms of social conversation impacting your e-commerce site and turning it potentially into a social commerce site? And then you have to think about where's your content coming from? Huge, huge uh, topic. I mean, I could firstly do a whole class and, you know, uh, at Bye Bye Baby, for instance, the, one of the biggest problems when I walked in the door and I first joined the company was 
there wasn't enough product on their website. There was 20,000 products in the store, only 1,000 on the web. They, they had a struggle understanding where that product content that they needed for the web was coming from. And I had to help them solve that. Uh, first get the static content and then help them develop dynamic content for the changing needs of the marketplace. Anyway, we can get into that more later. Um, so know yourself as a business. Do a classic SWOT, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats analysis that you've learned in your marketing classes. Uh, develop an e-commerce presence map. What presence do you have? Uh, where, where are your gaps? Then begin to timeline your project using project management, program management skills. What are the timings in your, phased, in your phases of your project to roll out your e-commerce presence? Set milestones, phase one, two, three, interim steps within phases. All right, how much will this cost? These are just placeholder numbers. I mean, yes, simple websites can cost up to a 5,000 small uh, startup websites, 25 to 50. Those are probably good targets to use for planning for your budgeting. But once you get to a much bigger site, you're going to have to look for funding as uh, it becomes, you know, hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars to get it done with a big bang. So SWOT analysis, this is a great chart. You should uh, hold on to this, uh, not just now, but in the future. And uh, breaks down how you gauge yourself and your company and how you're going to approach the market. And you can also use this to analyze competitors in various market segments. Uh, this is a great chart to help you do that. Uh, your e-commerce presence map. Okay, what type of uh, presence will you have? Is it just is it websites? Will you be utilizing email? And then there's the social and offline components. Offline being traditional, social being most of the, uh, the social sites that you understand, but obviously others would include Instagram, uh, Pinterest, YouTube, and others. And what's going on in these sites and uh, types of presence? Different activities are going on. So in traditional websites or mobile sites or tablet sites, you have a variety of things that are the same but maybe handled a little different. There's searching, there's display advertising, there's relationships with affiliates and sponsorships. Emails can take many forms. They could be newsletters uh, and your consumers and certain groups and personas within your consumer target uh, may depend on you for monthly newsletters. Others want just updates on uh, uh, new product offerings or promotions and sales. Uh, and then social media obviously has its own language in terms of conversations and engaging with consumers, prospects, and uh, just visitors who, who come to your site. Uh, and part of that is becoming a much bigger component of e-commerce or social commerce in terms of sharing information about your company and your products, engaging with your customer within the social networks. And then offline, obviously, still has its classic uh, activities of education and branding and exposure through things like print media, television, and radio. So in building an e-commerce site, it's very important to look at a systematic approach in anything. I mean, I advise coming out of the tech background and then marketing project background that you take a systematic approach, a staged measured approach that you can define your goals and your objectives. And this will help you learn how to choose the right technologies to meet those objectives. One acronym I'd like you to use, it's not in your book, but it's P-O-S-T, and it's uh, POST. And that stands for people, objectives, strategy, then technology in that order. So again, have a clear understanding of what your audience is, your people, your business objectives, number two, the strategies you want to take to succeed at those objectives, and then pick the technology to use for those strategies to meet those objectives to satisfy those people. Very, very important. It makes no sense to go out, in my opinion, uh, to build the technology or buy the technology, that's even worse, 
then find out it doesn't serve your objectives or even your audience. So very key point. So uh, keep an eye on that one. So when building your e-commerce site, think of it as a puzzle. There are a bunch of areas that you're going to have to um, take a look at that, you know, aren't just uh, technologies, as I mentioned. There's on the people component, there's the human resource and organizational capabilities, the functional team. And that's not just the IT developers, programmers, uh, business partners, technology partners that help you build the site or build your creative and your web design and your images. So you have to help bring that together. There's your product management, your marketing, your legal, your finance, your customer service. And then through your distribution, there's warehouse, inventory, supply chain management. A lot of skill sets uh, that are involved. Obviously, there's hardware and software because this is an internet-based business. And these can take the form of uh, small servers on a startup running in, you know, in your uh, small office to uh, outsourcing to a data center or running a data center yourself at your location or running cloud-based services or hosted environments that are off-site, but that you dial into through not just only internet connections, but secure telecommunications, such as VPNs or virtual private networks. And then you have to think about the design of your site. What is your site gonna look like? Very, very important for the workflow. Think of uh, the user experience, UX, the user interface, UI, the customer experience, CX, all of these things come together and are impacted by site design. Site design enables uh, a good customer experience. It has a good user interface uh, and, and all of that. So uh, very, very important components as you're assembling your puzzle and your site.